Hey guys, I'm Brett. In this video, we're gonna go through the ins and outs of getting your Weeble S set up and ready to use with your camera. Special thanks to Zeon for sponsoring this video. Before we dive in, let's take a look at everything we get in the Weeble S standard package. We have an included tripod handle, two-in-one quick release plate, lens support, a camera riser plate, an assortment of cables for connecting different cameras to the gimbal, batteries with a USB-C charger, and of course, the gimbal itself. Let's check out the gimbal and get it set up. There are these cool looking switches on each axis. These keep the gimbal locked up when storing it away, but can also be used to lock things up when balancing your gimbal. So let's do that. Slide down to unlock an axis. Move the arm into the balancing position and then slide it back to lock it in place. Do this for both the roll axis and the tilt axis. The pan axis remains in the same position, so we'll just leave it for now. With the gimbal locked and ready for balancing, let's get everything set up. Now, it's really important that you get your camera and any accessories set up for how you intend to shoot before you start balancing. This includes removing any lens caps, attaching lens hoods, adding filters, yada yada. So next, we'll connect our camera to the two-in-one quick release plate. The screws for connecting the plate to the camera are found inside this box of cables. Simply place the screw into the plate and use a coin to attach it to your camera. Now, generally speaking, the bigger your setup, the further back on your plate that you want to connect your camera. If you're using a smaller camera body and it's paired with a bigger lens, you can use the included riser plate to make sure things fit properly. Just connect the riser plate to your camera, then connect that to the quick release plate. The two-in-one release plate is Awesome! It's not only compatible with Manfrotto style RC2 connections, but you can quickly detach the top and now it's compatible with Arca Swiss connections too. Next, let's attach our zoom slash focus motor. If you're shooting with a lens that doesn't have built-in gears, you'll need to attach this gear ring. Simply wrap it around, make sure it's reasonably tight, then slide it to lock it in place. For the motor, we have four pieces here, a bracket which attaches to the quick release plate, the screw for the bracket, a small rod, and the motor itself. First, screw the bracket into the bottom of the quick release plate. Then insert the rod and clamp it down by tightening the screw. Next, attach the focus motor, line it up with the gear ring, then clamp that down. With the gimbal still locked up, let's attach the camera and lock it down. First, we'll loosen this lever and slide in our camera until the rear safety lock engages. Before balancing, we'll need to attach all of our cables. Inside this cable box, we have cables for all sorts of different cameras. First, let's find the cable for powering our zoom motor. It's this small USB-C to USB-C cable. Just plug in one end here and the other end into the motor. As for the other cables, each one is labeled to tell you the connection type. For reference, the online manual has a guide for showing you which cable corresponds to a particular camera and brand. Here we have four cables for connecting to cameras. One for cameras with a mini USB, one for cameras with a USB-C connection like the Panasonic GH5, we have one for cameras with a micro USB-C like the Nikon D850 or Canon 5D Mark IV, and then there's a cable for Sony cameras with this multi-port on the end, which looks similar to micro USB, but it's very different. Since we're using an A7 III, we're going to use this cable. Just connect the angled micro USB cable into the Weeble S, then plug the other end into the camera. 
Now that we're all set up for how we want it, we're ready for balancing. With Weeble S, there's more space than ever before to balance your setup, which means better compatibility and a better shooting experience overall. Now when it comes to balancing, achieving perfect balance is absolutely crucial to getting stable footage and the best battery life. So let's balance our Weeble S. Our goal here is simple, to have each axis balanced well enough that we can move our camera by hand to any position and it will remain still when we let go. Now it might seem complicated, but balancing couldn't be easier. Anytime we see our camera move or fall into one direction, we're simply going to adjust the position in the opposite direction. To make things even easier, we're going to balance each axis one at a time, thanks to these little locks here. Let's start by balancing the tilt axis. First, unlock the tilt axis. Since our lens is falling forward, we simply need to move it backward. Unlock the plate latch here and slide the camera back little bits at a time. As we get closer to achieving balance, very small adjustments become crucial. Keep making these adjustments until your camera is still and level with the lens facing forwards. Next, we're going to face our lens straight up. Again, since it's falling in this direction, we just need to move it in the opposite direction. Loosen the thumb screw here and make small adjustments until the camera remains pointing up. Then, just tighten the thumb screw again. Great! That's one axis down and the other two are just as easy. Just lock up the tilt axis and we're ready to balance the roll axis. Unlock the roll axis with this plate latch. Our camera is falling to one side. You know what that means. Yep. We're just going to move our camera to the other side until it remains level. Just tighten the latch when you're done. Leave this axis unlocked for now because we're going to balance the pan axis. Roll the handle to your left and into this position. Our camera is falling to one side. Loosen the thumb screw here and make your adjustments. Again, little adjustments go a long way. Awesome, our Weeble S is balanced and almost ready to go. Let's power this sucker on. With each axis unlocked, just push and hold the power button for a moment. If at any point you want to power down the motors without powering down the gimbal itself, just push and hold the POV button for three seconds to enter standby mode. When you're done, push and hold the POV button again to exit standby mode. Now that this thing's powered on, there's a few more things to take care of before shooting. Let's take a quick look at a few of the awesome things in the Weebles menu system. Access the menu by pressing down on this jog dial. First up is the motor tab where you can select and adjust motor strength. This is one of the first things you're going to want to do once everything is balanced. Now typically we would just set the strength to low, medium, or high depending on the size of our setup. But there's now this super cool feature here called Auto-Tune. With everything balanced, Auto-Tune will automatically adjust and optimize the power of each axis for you, giving you the best possible results for your setup while kind of taking away some of the guesswork. Next is Camera, where you select the camera brand that you're connecting to your Weeble. For Sony cameras, you'll also have the option of powering your camera from the gimbal. Depending on your camera brand, you might have to configure your camera's USB settings in order for this to work properly. The last option, CCS, stands for Camera Control System. You'll select this option if you're using the new Image Transmission System. More on this system in a future video, so subscribe and stay tuned. The Advanced tab allows you to adjust various gimbal settings right on the gimbal. This is huge, as you no longer have to connect to the app first in order to make these changes. Here we can adjust things like the speed of the joystick movement or how fast things respond in follow mode. You can adjust the smoothness which is how fast the gimbal eases into full movement speed. 
Lastly is dead band. This is the number of degrees you have to move or turn before the gimbal responds and starts moving as well. Play around with these settings and find what works for you. You can always revert back to default if things get a little bit wacky. Next on the menu is wheel, which is for customizing the zoom slash focus wheel right here. Joystick allows you to reverse the joystick controls. And then there's calibrate, which is a six step process that helps you correct any major issues with the gimbal like drift or improper angle. I'll have an in-depth video on the calibration process coming soon, so stay tuned. Now sometimes your camera may not appear perfectly level, and that's okay. This angle menu allows us to fine tune the angle of the tilt and roll axis to make things nice and perfect. Key allows you to change the behavior of the follow trigger and the function button on the side so that you either have to hold them down to activate them or simply click once to keep them activated. Finally, About gives you information about your Weeble S like the firmware it's running. It's a really good idea to make sure you have the latest firmware before you start shooting. You can download the latest firmware from Zhiyun's website or you can download the ZY Play app and update from there. I'll have a video coming on how to update your firmware, so I'll stay tuned. But that's it. We've balanced our Weeble S, tweaked a few settings, and we're ready to start shooting. If you guys have any questions for me, leave a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you. If you found this video helpful, drop a like too while you're at it. And subscribe to the channel because there's lots more coming. We have videos coming on filming with the Weeble S, the new image transmission system, and more. You don't want to miss it. Until the next one, I'll see you.